Now, it's getting harder for war criminals to avoid justice by disappearing into countries where fugitives have traditionally sought refuge. VOS senior investigative analyst Jeffrey Young reports high-tech police organizations and tougher international legal systems are helping to track down and prosecute uh, those suspected of crimes against humanity. Now, please note uh, this report contains graphic images of human remains. They're silent, but still screaming, calling on the world to bring their murderers to justice. Their cries rise up from the ground in places all over the world. Argentina, where Operation Condor slaughtered opponents of the state for 20 years. Rwanda, where ethnic hatreds in the 1990s culminated in tribal-related genocide. Sabrinica, a Bosnian town where Muslim men and boys were killed because of their faith. Somalia, where President Mohamed Siad Bari's brutality scorched the earth. In country after country, the question of justice is coming to the fore as the bones of victims are unearthed. In courtrooms in Africa, The Hague, the United States and elsewhere, accused war criminals and mass murderers are being prosecuted. On May 30, former Chadian President Hissin Habre was sentenced to life in prison by the extraordinary African chambers and Senegal tribunals set up by the African Union. This was the first time that a former national leader was prosecuted and convicted for human rights violations by the courts of another country. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Ziad Ra'ad Al Hussein, noted the precedent set by Habre's conviction, saying that in a world scarred by a constant stream of atrocities, the ramifications of this verdict are global. The former Chadian president, however, disputes the conviction. He argues that the verdict of the Senegal-based African Chambers Court was invalid. Abre's attorney, Francois Serre, explained his position in an exclusive VOA Skype interview. Mr. Abre was already tried in 2000 in Senegal. So our position from the beginning was the issue of double jeopardy. It could not be retried uh, because, because specifically of a political decision of the president of Senegal, who was not happy by the Supreme Court decision of Senegal, saying that Mr. Abre should not be tried. The Habre trial was held in Senegal partly because African leaders have long objected to the International Criminal Court at The Hague. They say the ICC unfairly targets Africans. While the U.S. Senate has not ratified the treaty that established the ICC, Washington does support the efforts of that court, according to George Washington University international law professor Ralph Steinhardt. There has been a certain amount of informal cooperation between the United States government uh, and the uh, body that oversees the development and the operation of the International Criminal Court. The United States also has its own laws on the subject, including the Alien Tort Statute, which gives the federal courts authority to try cases involving injuries to foreign nationals that occur overseas. Another law that pertains specifically to torture victims is currently being used in a Washington area federal civil case against a former Somali military commander now living in the United States. Yusuf Abdi Ali is accused of war crimes during the Mohamed Siad Bari regime. The lead counsel in the case, Kathy Roberts of the Center for Justice and Accountability, spoke to VOA via Skype. They adopted a statute called the Torture Victim Protection Act, which provides a specific cause of action not only to foreigners, but also to U.S. citizens for torture and summary execution. Our claims for torture and summary execution were clearly, by the, by the congressional record, clearly meant to apply overseas, abroad, in other foreign jurisdictions. Attorney Roberts says this case, which may go to the U.S. Supreme Court, makes it clear that while alleged perpetrators can move across borders, the victims of their crimes have a right to justice regardless of where they are. 